possible answer? Hmm. If O stood for one in English, and T stood, stood for two, and the second T for three, what might the next two letters be? S, S, four. Thank you very much. Round of applause. An old corny joke from Europe. That's if they were the letters representing the first seven numbers in the Arabic numbering system that most of the world is still uses. But what if this represented one because it's only made out of one line? And we have two T's because they're made out of two lines. And F's are made out of basically three lines. What would the very next letter be? F or any letters made out of three lines. And we could get into W's for the next letter, M, X, K, and so forth. Also, this could just be an acronym for a sentence. Once there, thought, for, friendly, whatever. It could be a, sentence, a memory tool for a sentence. Therefore, the answers could be any one of 26 letters in either one. The response and the message is, it depends on how you look at it, which is the answer to most questions in the universe outside of school. All right, if you have a note paper or just use your imagination, the goal is to connect these nine dots with four lines or less. And, oh, it says, nine dots with four or less straight lines. I'll show you one, seeing you're not as responsive as I'd like you to be. Most people think this is why they can't do it, because they see an imaginary box, which is where that line out of the box supposedly came from in the 1930s, out of Germany. So in order to solve it, you have to go out of the box. That's one way. And depending on which dot you start with, there are four different ways to do it the same way. But in actuality, you can do it with three lines. In actuality, you can do it with one line with a wide crayon, if you take the wrapper off. It was a nine-year-old girl that came up with that answer. You could pour paint on it, for those who hate lines, because the goal was to connect the nine dots. I didn't really say limit you how. You can spray paint on it like graffiti artists do. You can squash the paper up that someone did in my workshop last week in Singapore, and bet I could shove the pencil through this and hit all the nine dots. The odds might be in your favor, or you'll hurt yourself. Or you could put it down on the floor and go through the three, go all the way around the world, come back to the middle three, all the way around. It takes rather time consuming. But it's what we refer to as the Magellan approach. He was the adventurer who went around the world three times and missed Australia each time. Only Captain Cook found Australia originally, and that was by accident, because he got blown off course by a storm. He was 20 miles away, Magellan was supposedly and you couldn't see the little continent of Australia. Dip, paint, dip it in paint, cut the dots out like someone did last week and line them up, or spiral them out, put your pen in the middle here and go around like this. I had an industrial design professor come up with that idea 30 years ago. A wide roller. In other words, there are many possible solutions. The challenge the end result, which is what I try to get people to focus on, is stop looking for the right answer, look for possibilities of how to achieve your goal. Because how IBM did things is not the way Apple did things, is not the way Microsoft did things, 